Welcome back to Your 1230, the only podcast where our guests tell their story with the help of 12 questions in only 30 minutes. I'm your host, Mike Salitro, and we are very, very excited to be joined by Karim Karashni. Karim has lived all over the world, born in Quebec, grew up in France with Algerian roots, spent time in Eastern and Western Canada, as well as Kuwait and Malaysia. He describes himself as the embodiment of remote work and believes in the work to live, not don't, not live to work motto. He owns multiple businesses, been in multiple disciplines from a cleaning business to a real estate business, and now uh, runs uh, propertyguys.com. Karim, welcome. We are really excited to be speaking with you. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I'm a big fan of your show. I've listened to a lot of episodes, so um, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that very much. Um, I, I do want to start with the uh, ability to have lived all over the world, see different cultures. Um, I, I'm sure you speak multiple different languages. You've seen business in different uh, different continents, in different areas of um, in different professional sectors. What has what is it like bouncing around? How has that helped you? You know, I um, I realize uh, whenever I get that question, uh, you know, it allow me to take a step back and uh, and and realize that first I'm, I'm very grateful to you know to have had that uh, that uh, lifestyle, um, but uh, it uh, it really opens your mind not only to different cultures but how you know people think. Um, and, uh, and in business, you know, different opportunities. I've seen, you know, things um, that are done in France that I could, you know, be bringing to Canada. Um, I, uh, things that are done in Canada that now I'm in Malaysia currently um, that, you know, that could be a, a good business opportunity here. And um, when you have your mind open, you know, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, you usually have your mind open to, to opportunities. Um, so this, you know, constant traveling and meeting different people and different uh, ways of living, um, I think really expands or, you know, 10x this, this capacity of uh, uh, finding opportunities, see how you could uh, you could translate that to a, to a different, you know, to a different country, different uh, culture. Um, and I mean, just overall, I think it is it is important. You know, we have one life uh, on this earth. It's important to to get out of your comfort zone, get out of your bubble, um, and uh, you know, see the world. I love that answer on multiple, uh, you know, multiple ways. The the open mindedness is really important because I think that's what keeps a lot of us static whether it's geographically in one job in one role in one in one place um, because we mm -hmm. don't have the ability to kind of see past that but the way you talk about it is not just being open-minded to well this is how business is done in france maybe we can try this in canada it's not only business it's this worked is a lifestyle how can i make that work for for my business here there or or uh, you know kind of making multiple pieces fit in different ways so i love that that answer and the open-mindedness you know comes across as you talk about it um, being able to, you know, be in, in a position where it's the, the live to work mantra, when did that kind of change for you? Did you, was that something that you started with or did you kind of evolve there? Um, I would say, uh, no, I didn't grow up with that. I haven't, you know, I've, I haven't been a, a very hard worker uh, in, uh, in my early days, I think it really changed when I, um, I started a job with a company named, uh, Vivent, uh, home security, smart home, um, it's Canadian, um, uh, sorry, an American brand from, um, from Utah, uh, that is all over the U S and all over Canada. And I started working with them in, uh, in Calgary, uh, Alberta. So out West in, in Canada. Um, and, uh, and it was, I started in door to door sales which is, you know, one of the hardest jobs that you can do as, as yes, uh, you know, most people know. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, pure commission, you have to grind, you have to, to be out there. And so around, one thing that, that was amazing with this, uh, with their training and their, their support is that um, they don't just, you know, teach you how to sell their products, but really the whole mindset. Um, and, uh, you know, we used to wake up early as a team, wake up early, go to the gym, uh, do some reading, do some, you know, whatever meditation, then practicing our pitch together and so on every single day for, it's it usually only during the summer um, for, for most uh, sales guys. And so for four or five months, uh, you do that consistently. And so you learn not only obviously hard work, tenacity, but also how to have a whole lifestyle around, uh, you know, being successful. Um, and so that's something that really impacted me, you know, to this day. 
Um, obviously, you know, learning sales skills, sales skills, uh, you know, the soft skills, communication, and so on is extremely important. And I highly, you know, recommend it to anyone, uh, whatever you, you, you want to do in life. Uh, but on top of that, having that mindset of, um, you know, working hard to, you know, work hard and play harder uh, type of thing. So, so um, I, I kind of took that, uh, I think, to my current life and, you know, it, it grew it. I mean, it, it evolved in, uh, in my life to, um, uh, I'm very focused in having a, a really good work-life balance. You know, and that's that's what I mean by this little mantra. Um, for me, what's important is not, you know, you don't just work to make money so you can then, you know, eventually um, have some vacation or eventually go, uh, you know, in, on retirement and, and, and go travel. No, I, in my opinion, the, the, the focus should be on your life, whether it is your family, you know, sports and, and volunteering and, and all those kind of things, you know, spiritual, uh, your spiritual, uh, you know, religion and so on. Um, and work I see it almost as a secondary aspect in my life uh, that I fit in my, my schedule instead of the other way around, instead of having a schedule around work and fitting in what I enjoy and what, you know, make me happy uh, before and after work. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think that's the, that's what kind of unlocks everything there where it switches that I'm not, I'm not going to be sitting at this desk for 40 years so I can retire or I can go on that two week vacation that I've been working 50 weeks for. And I'm not sure that everybody gets there. So getting there at a young age uh, is, is fantastic. And I use the word unlock on purpose because you really have, you have opened so many doors by, by doing that. I wrote down. Have you read the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's 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 <laughs> what just comes. One of comes my. To yeah, yeah, absolutely. I um I read it a while ago. I didn't even finish it because what I liked was really the first part. If you remember, um, the the second part is just it's very um specific advice to you know to uh, um to take your business you know on on the road. Uh, but the first part is you know how you, this this new type of wealth. I think you call it the the new the new rich. Uh, NR um, and uh, and this uh, wealth of freedom of space and and time and and so on. That's really what what's important to me. A lot more than you know making millions. Um, I would trade that you know a hundred times. Uh, having my freedom of space, going wherever I want, working and doing everything I want, um, and uh, and not being tied to a job or not tied to a, to a specific goal that sucks you know the life out of me <laughs> you know so yeah the flower work week is is uh one of my uh main um influences likewise for me and i put you on the spot but you nailed it because i just re-listened to it in the last few weeks and i stopped at about the 70th percent because i was like this is a little tactical for what i need and you, the new rich is exactly how he describes it up front and it was as good 10 plus years later so uh, I'm, I'm glad that yeah. we, we overlapped there what I wrote down from uh, your your answer about door to door sales, uh, one absolutely, you know, you're right, spot on. That sales skills are universal for no matter what you're doing, um, and you know, some some people will say, you know, I don't want a cold call. I don't I don't know this person. Doing door to door, not only it's cold call plus because you're there face to face. There's no hiding. You're going to get a response, and yeah. you have to think on your feet. You can be told many different things. I'm sure you were. Um, what you know, looking back at you, to speak you speak about it very fondly. You were, you it was very, uh, you know, you were smiling and you talked about it positively. <laughs> Is there a story that you have going back to to what that experience was like for you? So it, it, it is tough. Um, and I remember, you know, a lot of times where, you know, you want to give up probably even every day, uh, you, you want to, uh, to, to quit and give up and then you just go home and whatnot. But now looking back, I do, I do remember it very fondly for what it brought to me. Um, but also, you know, I almost feel like compared to being a business owner, it was actually pretty easy. You just go, you knock on doors, you know, you give your pitch, you get inside and, and you get them to sign and you repeat, um, you know, looking back compared to, you know, being a, a business owner, you know, a, a realtor, um, a lot of a uh, lot of other jobs where you have to take a lot of work at home, uh, a lot of headaches and so on and so forth. Um, so um, but to answer to answer your question, um, there, there is one story that does come come to mind. I don't know if it's uh, it's the best one, but uh you know, I was selling uh, security systems and, and, and smart home. And uh, I had uh, I had this guy, beautiful house in a small town somewhere in, in Alberta. Um, and uh, we, we had a great conversation. And, uh, 
you know, towards the end, you know what, please come back tomorrow, which is something, you, you know, we're super, we, we know how to, uh, um, to, to go past that. But because we had a good time, we had a drink together, uh, you know, I've met his family, I spent probably almost an hour in, in, in his home. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, no worries. You want to sleep on it. I'll come back tomorrow. And um, I don't know if you see it coming, but <laughs> next day I go back and I can't find the house and, and the house actually burned down during the night. Everyone was fine. Everyone was fine. Uh, they, they got out on time. But um, that that's something that really, uh, wow. you know, marked me and uh, almost shocked me because, I don't know, it, it not only made me realize the value uh, that I was, you know, bringing with those, uh, those uh, systems, uh, but also from a business standpoint, um, the, um, the importance of, you know, urgency. I, I, I knew I shouldn't have told him, um, uh, I'll come back tomorrow. No, we, we do it now. We get the system installed now. Um, and, you know, maybe things would have been different. I don't know, you know, but uh, that's something that really stayed with me. That was in my first year, if I remember, and I did that for five years. Um, and it stayed with me. You know, I remember his name. I'm not going to mention it here, but I used to even use his name three, four, five years later, um, when, when people are like, can you come back tomorrow? I'm like, no, (laughs) that's an incredible story. And I mean, you said you might know where this is going. I had no idea where that was going. I could have guessed for the next 25 minutes and I didn't come close, Uh, but it's, it's good that you tie it to not only the urgency piece, but that you could have done something valuable for your client, for your customer there, not just, oh man, I wish Mm -hmm. I made the sale. Now it's no longer there. It's, I could have provided a service that would have been really useful. And here is the most in your face example you can have. Uh, so yeah, it it really flipped my mindset from, I'm just, you know, making sales of the numbers, you know, I want to make money and whatnot to no, wait, what I'm doing is extremely valuable. Uh, and I'm bringing a lot of value to, uh, to, to a lot of people. Um, and, and by the way, whether you're in sales or, um, a business owner, um, that's something that is extremely key. You have to believe in in what you're offering deeply and be passionate about it. Um, otherwise, the, you know there is no way uh, you can you can be successful. I want to I want to follow up on that, but I just want to pick up one last thing that I wrote down that you talked about earlier: the uh, kind of whole lifestyle approach from the team, uh, getting up together, working out, uh, journaling, just doing that collaboration. That makes it. Uh, you know, that makes a tough situation for some, you know, there's like the accountability piece. There's the, Hey, if he can do it, I can do it. And it just, it makes, it makes it so much easier when there's that group. And that's why you can do something uh, that's that challenging for five years. So I want to make sure the catch it. That's that's, if you can have that kind of culture, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, but- absolutely. Absolutely. And we all had a similar goal because we were, you know, we were young. I was uh, 20, uh, 24, 25, and we were all in roughly in the same um, uh, age group. Um, and so we all had that uh, that goal of, you know, going to travel at the end of the summer, because as I was saying, we were mostly working for four months. And then most of us were then going to travel uh, the rest of the year, um, which uh, which was a lot of fun. I traveled all over all over Southeast Asia, uh, Europe, uh, North America. Um, but I, I realized that it was not sustainable. And that's when I decided to, you know, actually have, um, you know, to to uh, to aim towards remote work, you know, to be a. Uh, uh, how do you call that? Nomad, uh, worker, whatever. Um, and, and, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm very grateful for that, but, um, that's where it originated. Yeah. Very nice. Let's fast forward there. Where, what are you doing now? Uh, it's your, your, uh, headline here talks about franchise opportunities, Massachusetts. You're in Malaysia. I'm actually in Massachusetts as we talk. So how, how are you doing that? And what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. So now I'm in charge of, um, uh, of franchise development for, uh, where is it? Propertyguys.com, right here. <laughs> uh, which is a, a Canadian brand, a Canadian company, um, very, very famous and popular in, in, in Canada. It's been uh, very successful for over 25 years in Canada. Um, and um, they are expanding internationally, their model. They have a very unique, uh, very unique and very valuable model. Um, and so I'm in charge of their franchise development in the state of Massachusetts. And, um, and in, in some other states, I'm helping out as well um, with... Uh, uh, well, sorry, helping out also my, my colleagues. So anyhow, so what is property, guys? It's basically a, a, an alternative solution to the traditional real estate model. Um, you're probably familiar, you know, there are lots of people who, you know, for sale by owners, a lot of people who want to sell on their own for whatever reason, um, but often they don't have the tools, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have, you know, the uh, the, the connections and so on to uh, to do so. And so that's where property guys started is to offer them uh, all the um, all the services, all the expertise and support that they need to sell their properties on their own. 
So that's how property gets started. But then it expanded into simply being a different way of doing real estate for um, uh, for anyone who either wants to keep more control in the process or simply keep a lot more money in their pocket. Um, because how they do it is by including all the services uh, that you need to sell your property in a package. Um, so we're talking exposure, you know, MLS and, and all the marketing, uh, the lawyer, the photographer, the stager, uh, negotiation, showings, and so on and so forth. All of that in a package that is a one-time flat fee, typically around five grand, five, six grand. Doesn't matter the value of the property. Uh, so you can imagine the dozens of thousands of dollars saved uh, for, for people using this model. Um, and, uh, and, and so this, this model, what I personally like about it is not only the fact that it's unique, it gets, um, uh, you know, it really stands out from the crowd. Um, and it brings a, a breath of fresh air, you know, to, uh, to, to the industry, but also by bringing, bringing so much value to each individual client. Um, and so from a business standpoint, it is a franchise model. And that's where I come in. I'm not a franchisee. I'm not in real estate, actually, myself. Uh, I'm in charge of finding those gems, you know, those uh, uh, um, uh, people that will champion this model in their local community in Massachusetts. Um, it can be someone who's already in real estate, someone who's already in business, or even just someone who wants to start their first business. You know, they, they are sick of their nine to five. They want to be their own boss. And, and so in, in this case, it's often uh, a really, really good option, you know, affordable, profitable, and so on. Thank you for the description. I know when we talked originally uh, be before tonight, we my background is real estate as well. And we kind of got a little into it. Uh, as, as you referenced, uh, it is a, it's an older business model. It is, I don't want to say totally broken, but it is one that is ripe for disruption that if you can deliver a service better, faster, cheaper, uh, or a combination of those things, you're going to draw business regardless of your uh, you know, your clientele or what your market is. So if you can do those things, if you can package it, systematize it, say, I can get you from A to Z, as well as, you know, you're, what you're accustomed to at a quarter of the price, that is a, a hell of a value proposition. So uh, it makes sense why it's, it's so big and why it's uh, coming to the U.S. Uh, you referenced, though, not having a real estate background yourself, not being a franchisee. How has that helped you in kind of identifying who is good for uh, for this role? You know, you talk about not needing a specific background, but what types of skills or personality have you seen done well in, in a role like this? Sales, first off, <laughs> <laughs> um, since we were we were talking about that. So um, I discovered that opportunity uh, kind of randomly from my accountant, from my my other business um, who uh, who mentioned uh, something to me and I dug, in, dug, in, dug into it uh, and really, really loved the, uh, the model and the um, um, and the, and the company from day one and more and more over time. So that's why I wanted to, to get involved. Um, yes, I don't have any official, um, you know, experience or skills in real estate. Um, but, um, my job is really, as I said, to, to select. So not only it's a big part of, you know, marketing and sales. So to advertise and educate people on, on, on this opportunity, um, uh, educate them also along the way, kind of guide them along the way as they want to become franchisee, but also, you know, select, um, uh, the best one, the best fits, because it's in my best interest and in the company's best interest to have only uh, excellent franchise in each region. Um, because the, 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 the success of one franchise ripples in the neighboring ones, and that's how you know, we grow from um, uh, territory to territory. Um, and so how did I uh, you know, figure out what is you know, a good franchisee? I just talked to a lot of them um, in, within our company and in, in others, but uh, we, we have about 100 franchises right now up and running. So I've talked to a lot of them, some new ones, some um, older ones. Um, the uh, the veteran has been with Property Guys for almost twenty years. Uh, the newer ones, you know, just a few months, and I'm often in touch with them uh, to to know about how they got started, their challenges, their their successes. Uh, one of the um, uh, newer franchisees started just six months ago. They already have fifty listings and worked with almost as many uh, as many buyers. Um, simply, and you know, I just talked to her a few days ago. Her name is Tony. Um, and she, she told me from day one, her and her husband, Mark, uh, they decided to, um, not bring, um, to, to simply, f uh, follow the process, you know, the systems in place for Gas has been doing that for 25 years, has had many franchisees reaching over a million dollar a year. Um, so if they follow the process to a T, uh, they would be successful and, you know, he was right. <laughs> so, um, 
uh, yeah, but now I've been doing that for for about a year. I've talked to uh, to lots of people. Um, I have a few people who uh, who got started. So you know, you gain experience even on the uh, on the job. Sure. No, no I, I want to clarify. That's that's a good answer. The I I did not say you didn't have real estate skills. You met, you mentioned yourself as not having a real estate background, but your skills certainly from what you've done, the way that you uh, you know present, you certainly are skilled to pick up real estate any second. So I wanted to say between your your sales and and the, your business background, no no doubt you have uh, real estate uh, skills. Uh, but I want to ask with franchises similar to and you know I think they're more. I will say ex- accepted in a market than let's say a network marketing approach, but I'm sure you get pushback saying, you know, what's the catch? Well, how's this going to work? Or, or I don't know if this is different. This is not going to work where I live uh, with your sales background, with your entrepreneurial uh, successes. How are you able, able to help people see that? Yes, you might have a, a bad story or a bad feeling, or you may not know really what this is. How do you help them kind of open their eyes? This is a good opportunity. This is a good opportunity for you specifically because. Yeah. Um, so there is. Um, so mo- more recently, I've started to focus um, my my approach specifically to real estate professionals, to um, uh, real estate agents and mortgage brokers in particular, um, because I feel like they they would be they they are typically a really really good fit. Not only from the fact that they you know they know the industry, um, and um, and they have it's a way for them to potentially um, you know have uh, sorry have a <laughs> let me repeat this <laughs> to to potentially have uh two hats two two uh, two two uh, streams of income so take a a mortgage broker for example being a franchisee and dealing with you know about a uh, 100 listings a year at the same time you know those um those sellers you know wanting to buy or all the potential buyers looking for mortgage you know he can funnel them uh, into his mortgage business it's the same for you know a real estate lawyer uh, even a photographer and inspector and so on and so forth. Um, so all of that to say, I, I focused a lot more on real estate professionals. And uh, what I came to uh, to realize, the, the pain points, agents, for example, the main pain points are um, typically, you know, standing, that, standing out from the crowd. Uh, there is in Massachusetts 27,000 agents and um, uh, often um, they, they also, you know, you guys often have a similar value proposition. So being able to you know, differentiate yourself uh, is something important. Um, owning a business, a lot of uh, realtors that I talk to, and I talk to a lot of realtor, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, um, a lot of them do have in mind to eventually own a business. And really the, uh, the, the only route as an agent is to have your own brokerage very often. Right. Um, so this, this is a way to, um, a different way to own your, your own business. Um, and, uh, being one out of one, being exclusive, you know, owning a territory, where you're the only one, where anyone who wants to work with property guys, for whatever reason, they heard about it, they, they you know, they saw the sign, um, they want to to list their house with property guys. They're your clients if they are in your territory. So this exclusivity being, you know, like the only um, ABC brokerage in in Boston, uh, every listing there are yours. So those are the three the three main factors that I, I'm often uh, talking about with uh, with agents that really strike a chord. Um, and and get them to to move forward with the idea. Yeah, the, the first. I'm not 100 sure if I answered your your question fully because I, I, I <laughs> tell me you can rephrase if uh, if I wasn't. No, that was a, that was a great answer. I was going to say that the first two parts specifically, the differentiation piece and the I want to own my own business piece. You hear that the most from agents, especially when you talk about a relatively small state with twenty seven thousand professionals with a similar value proposition. That this is a way to differentiate and to get to a place where you have autonomy in your business, either working with a specific geography or a business model that's not going to be uh, duplicated. So that makes a ton of sense. And uh, I think that once you, you know, you have someone who can visualize those things that can real, really sees the value in it, that they can in turn deliver that value to, mm-hmm. to the client. So uh, love that model. There. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, that better than most, uh, you know, most uh, majority of, uh, of, um, real estate agents are not, you know, where they'd like to be. They are not, you know, that successful. We we always hear of the top 5% or the top 10% that we see everywhere. And, and you know, that's great. Um, but the other 90% or maybe 85% uh, are definitely not where they'd like to be. So often having, you know, a different option, different way of, uh, of uh, going around, um, you know, real estate, um, not, you know, not in any way, meaning that it is, um, 
you know, uh, realtors are bad and, and property guys is, is good. No, it's just something different, different option, different uh, approach. Um, that's, that's, you know, um, refreshing for, for, for lots of uh, agents that I talk to. Um, yeah. To look without, into. without a doubt. The other side of the coin of differentiation is the ability to diversify is that you've got an ability now to have not only a different business model, but you can offer uh, different offerings within different markets, whether it's a, you know, a good market, bad market, upcycle, whether it's a high price, low price market, you can now tailor your product and you can now diversify. So you don't have to worry about, well, interest rates are up. I'm going to take the next six months off type thing that I don't have anything to sell. So uh, that's exactly. the big piece that you can run your own business. You have the autonomy and you've got a vehicle where you can start diversifying uh, the, what you do and how you deliver it. So it makes a ton of sense. I um, want to kind of switch gears a moment here. Uh, somebody who took eight months off and traveled, somebody who has been as many places as you are, somebody who understands what what's important in life. What do you do for fun or what do you do when you are not working? Um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm quite busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I really fill my schedule. My calendar always, you know, looks uh, super full, but a lot of things are, you know, uh, fun stuff. So uh, here, since I've been in, in Malaysia, and even when I was in Canada, I do uh, a lot of volunteering. I mean, I, um, I don't like to say that because I'm not saying that in any way to, uh, you know, to boast or whatever, but I do enjoy um, uh, so volunteering either in my, in my uh, local mosque uh, or uh, right, right here where uh, with my wife, we're volunteering with, uh, with orphans. Uh, which is something that is very difficult to do in North America, um, and uh, and here we're actually able to go to the orphanage and play with them, and 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 so on and so forth. Um, so finding opportunities like that to to give back and uh, bring value to uh, to others uh, in a you know genuine manner is something that you know I I, I really enjoy. Uh, I lo- I do a lot of sports as well. I used to play a lot of uh, uh, volleyball for the past fifteen years, um, but since I've been uh, I've been here, they don't really play volleyball here in Malaysia. So I started uh, playing badminton, uh, which is uh, which is fun. But yeah, we we go out a lot. We go explore. I mean, again, one of the the reason why I'm I'm traveling so much is to you know to to explore you know not just the culture but uh, uh, nature. I'm a big fan of nature. You know, I go we go hiking, we go kayaking, we go wherever. Just take the bike and wander around, get lost. <laughs> so that's Very something nice. I really enjoy to do. Very nice. Uh, it's a solid answer. And huh. d- sorry, sorry. Go ahead. N- not by the way, um, you don't need to travel to actually do all of that. I mean, to 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 go explore and to go uh, uh, wander around. That's something even back home I used to do a lot and discover. You know, I just go on Google Maps and look for a spot that you know I've never been to, and uh, um, that you know looks interesting. And I just go get lost. Like it's it's. I think a lot of people underestimate the value of their own backyard. You know the you know around their own town, their own city. There are lots of gems um, that uh, um, people who've been there for fifty years have you know never discovered. So you know can go out there and <laughs> explore your own backyard. I'm so glad you said that because you know tying it back to real estate, that that's the other differentiation piece. That you know you'll talk to people who work in real estate, they'll tell you about every house on the street or this this neighbor, this neighbor. But as you mentioned, there are plenty of things to do that other people don't know. So if you truly ingratiate yourself with your your area, you will find groups, activities, things that nobody else knows, nobody else is doing, and that now you'll enjoy it. But then you'll be able, you'll really be a piece of that community and you'll speak about it as somebody who's involved in it as opposed to somebody who read, you know, read a, an article about it or you know, doesn't really know what they're talking about. So that's a great way both to personally do the things you want to do, take that adventure, and, and then it helps you professionally. So that's great advice, even if you're not traveling. Um, lastly here, just wrapping up, how many languages do you speak and what do you consider your natural tongue? Um, so my mother tongue is French, but my more natural tongue now is English because I've been, you know, uh, speaking English for the past 10 years. English is um, excellent. You know, on the, it's, it's, it's a great language. You should No, you should your, your English specifically, very good. <laughs> oh, as, as an ugly American who only speaks English, yours is excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, I do speak Spanish. Uh, I need to practice it a little bit more, but uh, I, I was quite fluent in Spanish. Uh, Arabic as well, same thing. I used to, to speak a little bit better, but I need to, to practice it. I've started taking uh, Malay since, uh, since I've been here for the past uh, three months. I've uh, learned sign language um, as well uh, recently. Sign language, highly recommend because it's a lot easier than most people think. I learned it on YouTube. Lots of great videos. 
and it's pretty fun and it's uh yeah it's a great language to to learn and you never know, i don't know anyone who's uh, deaf um but um uh you never know when you're gonna meet someone and when i when i do come across people at the coffee shop or whatnot they are just so happy that you know you're able to uh to 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 speak with them even you know very basically um and uh that's it yeah so four five and a half <laughs> uh, that's it five and a half okay uh good answer uh so we we're coming up on time. Where can our listeners find you? Where can uh, propertyguys.com obviously, but if they want to connect with you, Grim, where can they do that? Yeah, sure. So uh, with me personally, uh, on LinkedIn is usually one of the uh, the, the best way to uh, to get a hold of me, Karim Kureshni, uh On LinkedIn, uh, I'm the only one. Um, uh, my phone number, also my my business uh, line. Uh, anyone can text me. It's eight five seven three zero eight one two three four. Very easy. Um, or simply Google property guys message sets and it, you know, they will find my information uh, very easily as well. Excellent. So we will post all that information. (laughs) Propertyguys.com. Thank you for that. Uh, Thank you for joining us. This has been a blast. I could easily uh, ask you questions for another 30 minutes, but I will, I will spare you because I'm sure you've got better things to do. Um, But I do look forward to doing this again. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. I actually didn't see the, the time fly and I'd be happy to do that for another 30 minutes, one hour, whatever long. <laughs> you got Thanks it. for having me.